Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Loretta Young, William Holden, and David Bruce in Christmas Holiday. Ladies and gentlemen, your guest producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Probably no modern writer has given us more extraordinary situations in his stories, more excitement and suspense and drama than W. Somerset Maugham. Tonight we bring you Universal's adaptation of his recent novel, Christmas Holiday, the compelling story of a woman whose life is shattered by a tragic crime, who finds herself caught between a hopeless love and a man who tries to free her from its bondage. That woman is portrayed tonight by one of Hollywood's outstanding stars, Loretta Young, making her 18th appearance on this stage. Co-starred with Miss Young is David Bruce from the original screencast of Christmas Holiday. Also, William Holden, who just last week received his honorable discharge from the Army Air Forces and is making his first return appearance in radio. I had the privilege of following Bill's career when I was in the same branch of the service and also the privilege of following the productions of this theater, broadcast overseas by shortwave. I can honestly say those broadcasts were as much of a blessing to men in isolated islands, steaming jungles, and waste deserts as a cake of luck soap. And that is no exaggeration. If people knew how much small luxuries, like a cake of luck soap, are appreciated overseas, I'm sure we'd all be doubly grateful for them here at home. Grateful, too, that Lux can bring us three fine stars. Loretta Young as Abigail, William Holden as Jerry, and David Bruce as Robert in Universal's Christmas Holiday. Our curtain rises on the first act. <laughs> December 24th, 1944. Through heavy skies... A transcontinental plane wings its way westward. Among the passengers are two young army officers on holiday furloughs. Jerry, Jerry will be in Nashville in a few minutes. Why don't you change your mind and get off with me? I thought we weren't going to talk about it. Sorry, but you're my best friend and we've got to talk about it. That telegram you got in camp. What was it? What did she say? Okay. She got married. She got married yesterday. She wishes me happiness. That's all it said. Uh, it's tough, Jerry. Yeah. Can I use for a wedding ring? Here's one you can have cheap. And you're going on to Frisco just the same? That's right. Why? Suppose you do see her. What good will that do you? Look, Jerry, get off with me. We could have a terrific time. It's practically Christmas Sorry, Eve. Sorry, but I'm we... going. Jerry, forget her. Forget her as fast as you can. Now, you're not going to make a fool out of yourself just because I've you... already made a fool out of myself. And she's not going to get away with it. Look, no, Jerry... That's you're... all I've got to say. Well, maybe you'll change your mind later. You could always get off at New Orleans. I'll pipe down and lay off. Well, I suppose you know what you're doing. Yeah, I know just what I'm doing. Say, I thought you said we were coming into New Orleans, stewardess. We're just outside of New Orleans, sir. This is our alternate airport. Oh. Gosh, some rain. Lieutenant, wake up, Lieutenant. Oh, oh, I guess I must have dozed off. We're making a landing just outside of New Orleans. Nothing wrong, just unfavorable weather ahead. Oh, how long are we laying over? We really don't know, Lieutenant. We're taking all the passengers to a hotel just in case we have to stay here for the night. Watch your step getting off the plane. And Merry Christmas, everyone. It's Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Now, if you've all registered here at the desk, ladies and gentlemen, you can go to your rooms. We're keeping in constant touch with the airport, and we'll advise you as soon as we learn anything. Oh, beg pardon, Lieutenant. Yes? I'm Simon Fenimore, the evening inquirer. You one of the party that made that emergency landing? That's right. Oh, anything happened? Anybody hurt? No, nothing happened. Not a thing. Oh, I was afraid of that. Thanks. Take your bags, Lieutenant? Oh, yeah, yeah, room 1012. This way, sir. Look, uh, you suppose I could get anything to eat down here? 
The dining room's closed, sir, but you can probably get a sandwich at the bar. Okay, here. You can go on up with the bag. Thanks, Lieutenant. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. You know, I've been watching you. Ha, what's the matter? Christmas kind of getting you now? Have a drink, Lieutenant. No, thanks. No? Oh, Steve. Yes, Mr. Fenimore? Double scotch, straight. Yes, sir. Oh, you sure you won't change your mind, Lieutenant? It's just a plain old chatterbox, aren't you? Now, look, I don't want to seem like a... <laughs> forget it, forget it. I'll leave just as soon as I finish my drink. Something's wrong, huh? I bet you I can guess. You figured on being in San Francisco bright and early Christmas morning, and here you are, trapped like a rat in New Orleans. <laughs> Am I right? Well, I had sort of planned... I thought so. Planes all grounded, trains sold out. Wait a minute, I got an idea. If anybody can fix anything, I know the one who can. And you and I are going there. What are you talking about? About a place called the Maison La Fête. <laughs> and a dame called Valerie Morrow. Oh, she's the greatest little fixer south of Chicago. Come on. Now, wait a minute, I don't get it. What and where? Well, it's a nightclub. Maybe, maybe not too high class. Ah, but who cares? I'm, I'm the public relations counsel. Uh, press agent. Well, thanks, but I've got to stay here. There's no telling when they may resume my flight. Oh, just leave word at the desk where you've gone. You think that's safe? Of course, of course it's safe. Besides, what have you got to lose? Believe me, they don't roll second lieutenants at the Maison La Fête. They don't generally have more than a couple of bucks on them and a picture of a sweater girl. <laughs> Come on, what do you say? Well, just what you said. What have I got to lose? She is, Lieutenant. This is the lady I was telling you about. Valerie the Morrow, Jerry Mason. Valerie runs this uh, charming little place. How do you do? Please sit down, Lieutenant. And, and won't you sit down, too, Simon? Thank you very much. I will. <laughs> Simon told me you're trying to get to San Francisco. That's just what I told her. Also, that you're a very nice guy, and maybe she can fix it to get you on a train. Simon has a heart as big as all outdoors, Lieutenant. He likes to help people. If I can do it. Well, I'd certainly appreciate it, Mr. Morrow. I had a friend ask me the same thing this afternoon. I tried every connection. It was no use then, and it's no use now. I'm sorry. Well, thanks, anyway. How about a drink? Oh, no. Oh, no, he doesn't drink. It's an election bet or something. Look, look, Valerie, do you think you could arrange it so the lieutenant wouldn't be lonely for a minute or two? Like, like letting him hear the sound of a human voice. Oh, huh? no, really, I... What about Jackie? Why not? Eddie? Yes, ma'am? See if you can find Jackie. She's probably in her dressing room. Yes, ma'am. Jackie's a singer, kid. She's the so-called star of our so-called entertainment here. Look, now, there's really no need for anything like that. Relax, I... will you? You give me the willies. It's Christmas Eve. <laughs> so you see, Jackie, Jerry here is what you might call an unexpected pleasure. Hello, Lieutenant. How do you do? His plane had to make a forced landing, sort of. Isn't that the way things always happen, Jackie? You're going along, and all of a sudden, boom, you got to make a forced landing. Suppose you and I just amble along, Simon. Okay. Oh, just one word in parting. <laughs> you won't find Jackie hard to talk to, Lieutenant. He's pretty tight, isn't he? Oh, not for him. He's been drinking himself into the gutter for a long time. They're running out of gutters now. Do you want to dance? Oh, I... I'm afraid I'm not a very good dancer. Then we'll just sit here and have a drink. Whatever you say. Eddie. Yes, miss? The usual, and, um... Oh, I, um, uh, scotch and soda. Yes. Well, having a good time? Oh, hello. Yes, fine. Our friend, Mr. Fenimore, just passed out. But don't worry, Lieutenant. He had you on his mind. he just written you a note. Here. A note? Well? It just says uh, Midnight Mass at the St. Louis Cathedral. Midnight Mass. Well, maybe you know what he means, Lieutenant. I don't. You're going to the cathedral? You're going? Well, I certainly hadn't planned on it. Oh, take me with you, Lieutenant, will you? But I don't think I'm going myself. It would be a big favor, really. It would, and I, I want to go terribly. Looks to me like you're on the spot, Lieutenant. Please. Okay. Thanks. Thanks very much. It won't take me five minutes to change. I don't understand. Uh, can she leave here just like that? 
Doesn't she work here? She's really a very nice kid. She deserves a break. Oh, uh, you'll need a car to get to town. I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Oh, yes, yes, and here, here's some money. Oh, that's okay. It's on the house. Christmas. Oh, well, thanks. I still don't know how quite what to say about all this. Well, then don't say anything. I'll see you around sometime. Yes. I never attended a mass before. I never knew what it was like. It's been a, it's been a long time for me too. I... What's the matter? <sighs> no. But you're crying. Is, is there anything I can? Do? No, no, no! Please, just let me alone. <laughs> hoping you would. All right. But I'll have to stop by the hotel first. There's still a chance that my plane may get out. Your plane? Yes, that's right. Well, let's see if we can find a cab. Well, Lieutenant, any news? The desk clerk says the airlines are calling back in a little while. There's still a remote chance of leaving tonight. I'd better get on home, then. Oh, no, please. We still can have a cup of coffee. There's a bar just across the lobby. A bar that serves coffee? Well, let's find out. Come on. Well, we have one thing to be thankful for. The coffee's even blacker than the look the waiter gave us. <laughs> How do you feel? All right. How do my eyes look? Very nice. Uh, uh, well, they're not red anymore. You know, I... Sorry I broke down like that in church. I've never cried like that before in all my life. And I didn't cry for the reason you may think. I didn't think anything. Do you mean Simon Fenimore didn't tell you about me? No. Well, I... I wanted to go to Mass with you because I thought if I did, I might become a part of it. Share something with some of all those people there in church. Some feeling or some praying. Some, some forgetting. Well, if you had a good cry and... That's supposed to help. Yeah. You know, I've been alone as long as I can remember. I was born in Maine. I lived there until I was 16, and then I came to New Orleans. You're sure Simon didn't tell you anything? Nothing. Well, my name isn't Jackie Lamont. It's Abigail, Abigail Manette. I thought it best to change my name after the trial. You see, I'm the wife of Robert Manette. I'm Mrs. Robert Manette. Oh? Three years ago, my husband murdered a man named Harry Jordan. He was convicted and sentenced to death. And then they changed it to life imprisonment. He's in the state prison right now. Look, there's uh, nothing you have to tell me. Really, I, I... I want to talk. Really, I want to tell you. Robert and I had been married only about six months. I didn't think it was possible to be as happy as we were. Maybe I mean as I was. They wanted me to divorce Robert after he was convicted. They said it was shameful that I should still love him. As if you could stop loving just because it's shameful to love. That night he killed Jordan and came home very late. I didn't see him until the next morning. He was still sleeping when I went downstairs to the kitchen and that Robert's mother, we were living with her, she was fixing breakfast. Good morning, Mother. Good morning, Abigail. Robert's still asleep. He didn't get home until late. Yes, he, he stopped by my room. We talked for a while. Didn't he tell you? Uh-uh. Oh, I brought his suit down. I'm going to press it for him. I'll have it all ready for him when he gets up. 
Oh, dear. What is it? Oh, look, there's a stain on his trousers, and it's his new suit, too. The coffee's ready. Take some up to Robert. Oh, it's but... time he was awake. But, Mother, he always likes to have it here with me. He'll be down in a minute. And... Abigail, take his coffee up to Robert. All right, Mother. Robert is up. Robert will have his coffee with his wife and his mother. <laughs> then hurry up, darling. Good morning, Mrs. Manette. Good morning. And good morning to you, Mrs. Manette. May I breakfast in my robe? Sit down, Robert. If you look for your trousers... As I most definitely did. Well, I was just about to press them. Thank you, darling. Well, Mother, where is it? The morning paper. Here. There's nothing in it. Oh. Just 24 pages of blank paper, huh? You know what I mean. There's nothing. Nothing? You're sure? What's this nothing? Nothing what? Oh, you should know Mother by now. She says there's nothing. There's nothing. Sit down, sweetheart. You can press the trousers later. Well, except they'll have to go to the cleaners. There's a big stain, Robert. And, darling, you should be more careful. We're trying to economize, remember? Mother, what are you doing? If this suit has to be cleaned, the pockets have to be empty. You're not to go through my pockets, do you hear? Robert, this money. Where did you get all this money? Robert. You know where I got it. Oh, you promised us you wouldn't gamble. You promised both Except of us. Except it wasn't gambling. It was a sure thing. Money in the bank. Oh, I was going to tell you, but... I'll tell you what. You hold on to the money for me, Abigail. If I keep it, it'll just slip through my fingers. But if you keep it... No. Now, look, Mother... I know you mean well. Believe me, I do, but I'm capable of handling my own affairs. Abigail, you'd better go up and do your room. No, but... but... We can't leave the rooms unmade all day. Please go, Abigail. Yes, Mother? I was hurt and puzzled and so worried. I said nothing to Robert when he came to kiss me goodbye. Nor did I say anything during the afternoon when I saw Mrs. Manette slip into the backyard carrying Robert's suit. She went to the incinerator and threw it in and stood there until it was consumed. When Robert didn't come home for dinner, I made up my mind to get at the bottom of this mystery at once. Mother. Yes, dear? I've wanted to talk to you all day. I must talk to you. What is it? What's it all about? What's what all about, Abigail? Well, this morning. About there being nothing in the paper. Nothing about what? And, and Robert's trousers. You burned the suit in the incinerator. Why? I burned his suit, Robert's suit. Yes. Oh, now I know what you're talking about. You remember that old blue velvet dress of mine? Well, I just decided I couldn't stand to look at it another minute. Oh, Robert's suit. I could get nothing more out of her. A little while later, we had a visitor, a detective. He asked us to tell Robert to stop by police headquarters. He said it was nothing important. I went to bed, but I couldn't sleep. A thousand terrible thoughts stabbed through my mind, and then suddenly the bedroom door opened softly. I turned on the lamp. It's kind of late, isn't it? I'm sorry. Robert. Robert, are you all right? Where have you been? I'm all right. Why aren't you sleeping? Well, I've been worried about you, Robert. I got I... tied up. I wish people would stop worrying about me. What is it now? There was a detective here to see you. What did he want? He said you should go to police headquarters tomorrow. Okay, I will. Why? I don't know. Robert, what are you trying to keep from it's me? It's nothing. But, Robert, please, I want please, to Please, Abigail, it's nothing. If there's anything wrong, Shut darling... up! Shut up and let me alone! He wasn't gone for long this time. When he came back, he was a different person. Oh, he was so gentle and so sweet. So full of remorse and begging for forgiveness. Darling. Darling, how can I tell you how sorry I am... You know I wouldn't want to hurt you for anything in the world. Oh, I know that. Please say you'll forgive me, please. I do, Robert. I do forgive you. Darling, you must tell me the truth. Where did you really get that money? You didn't win at gambling, did you? No. Darling, you know how silly Mother is about putting her money in a bank. Yes. You know about that cash she keeps in her room. Well, I got in a jam last week, and, well, there was just no other way to get out of it. I borrowed some of it. I see. Sweetheart, I, I know I've said it a hundred times before, but this time I mean it. Everything's going to be different. Oh. Abigail, after all, those people had to be paid. What people? Well, you know, those people I owed money to, Jordan and those other bookmakers. I, I don't believe you. What about that detective and what about those trousers? Mother couldn't get the stain out. I put this suit on and took the others to the cleaners. Robert, I saw your mother burn those trousers in the incinerator. Okay. I lied to you. But if anybody asks you, I got those trousers dirty cleaning the car. Do you hear me? Cleaning the car. They got dirty and my mother gave them away to a tramp. You stick to that story, Abigail. It's a story my mother's going to tell. 
And about the money, if anybody asks you, you never saw that money. You never knew I had it. My life may depend upon it. No, no. Abigail, if, if you ever loved me. I don't know what you've done, Robert. I can't help myself. I'll always, always love you. Robert was arrested a couple of days later, and then it came out. He'd had an argument with Jordan about that money he owed him. There'd been a fight, and Robert had taken Jordan's gun away from him and killed him with it. And then he took his money. The charge was first-degree murder. Well, it must have been awful. Is there anything I can do? No. No, not a thing. You're a nice person, Lieutenant. Mason, Lieutenant Mason. Lieutenant Mason. So that's you, isn't it? Lieutenant Mason. Oh, wait. excuse me a second, please. Oh. I'm Lieutenant Mason. About your plane, sir. The desk told me to tell you there'll be no planes out of New Orleans until tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks very much. Well, where were we, Lieutenant? You were saying I was a nice guy. And you are. And it's late, and it's time for me to say goodbye. Where are you going? I don't know. Maybe home. Maybe back to the Maison Lafette. I'm tired. I'm awful tired. Look, uh, 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 the bellboy just then. Uh, uh, my plane's leaving in 30 minutes, so uh, that leaves a perfectly good room going to waste upstairs. Why don't you use it? Are you sure your plane's leaving? I'm sorry, I didn't, didn't mean to say that. All right. I just thought that, well, you do look tired and... Something upset you terribly in I the thought church. I explained all that in my own vague sort of way. Yes, you did. Let's skip it then. I'll see if I can get a cab. Oh, Lieutenant. I'll surprise you. I'll take that room. Oh, swell. I'll have them send my bags down. You've been nice. Maybe we'll meet again some stormy Christmas Eve. Hmm? I hope so. I'd like to very much. You're not checking out, Lieutenant? Uh, no, but uh, I won't be back tonight. I, um, uh, I've loaned the room to a friend of mine. But your baggage, sir? Uh, check it down here, can't you? Uh, I'll be back in the morning. Well, well, yes, if you wish. Thanks. You see, I... Oh, would you care for the morning paper, sir? They just came in. I was just looking at that headline. Manette escapes from state prison. Yes, that Manette fellow. He was in there for life. It was quite a sensational case. Good family, you know. Oh, they'll catch him all right. Yes, Yes, I, I guess they will. Well, good night. Good night, sir. Merry Christmas. In just a minute, we'll bring you the second act of Christmas Holiday. Right now, I see Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter. What's new tonight, Libby? Well, it's news when a famous singing star has a brand new type of role in her latest picture, isn't it, Mr. Keeley? Well, that must be Deanna Durbin, if I know my movies. Mm -hmm. The picture is Universal's Lady on a Train, in which Deanna's co-starred with one of our stars of this evening, David Bruce. It's a mystery thriller, and I understand Deanna does a fine job as an amateur lady sleuth. And wait till the women in our audience see the clothes she wears. A wardrobe specially created by three of Hollywood's most famous designers. Wouldn't that make even the men sit up and take notice, Mr. Kennedy? Well, Libby, Deanna certainly has the looks and personality to set off a beautiful wardrobe. But it was her close-up shots that gave me the thrill. One of the loveliest complexions in Hollywood. A luxe complexion, Libby. <laughs> I was waiting for you to mention the fact that Deanna's a luxe girl. She always uses luxe toilet soap. Says it gives her skin real beauty care. Of course, Libby. That's the reason nine out of ten lovely Hollywood stars use Lux toilet soap regularly. Active lather facials are so quick and easy that busy women everywhere can depend on them. Here's all you do. Cover your face generously with Lux soap's creamy lather and work it in thoroughly. Rinse with warm water, then cold, and pat with a soft towel to dry. That's Deanna Durbin's daily complexion care. It really makes skin lovely, as she says. Recent tests show that. Actually, three out of four complexions improved in a short time with this gentle daily care. If you haven't tried Lux Toilet Soap, why not begin tomorrow? See if you aren't delighted with the new smoothness and softness 
Hollywood's own beauty care gives your skin. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act Two of Christmas Holiday, starring Loretta Young as Abigail, David Bruce as Robert, and William Holden as Jerry. It's early the following morning. Through the fog and rain, Lieutenant Jerry Mason makes his way back to the hotel. In the deserted lobby, still piled on the desk, is a stack of morning newspapers, their headlines blaring out the war news. And in type not much smaller, the escape of a murderer named Robert Manette. In room 1012, a girl who married Robert Manette is about to check out. Yes? It's me, Jerry Mason. Who? Oh. Good morning. But I thought you said you... Oh, uh, the, uh, the airline changed their mind. They stayed grounded all night. You don't lie very well, Lieutenant. Well, you looked so tired last night and upset, and I got a swell room at the athletic club. Just wanted to do me a favor, hmm? Why? Oh, I don't know, except that you're a nice girl. <laughs> and what do the airlines have to report now? That it's still raining and the fog is pretty thick. It'll be a while yet. Oh. Oh, uh, see a newspaper this morning? No. Why? Oh, no reason. I, well, I just wondered what the weatherman had to say. Think it'll ever stop raining? They have an answer for that in Maine. It always has, they say. <laughs> yeah. Tell me, Jerry. What's she like? What's who like? Your girl. You left a telegram on the dresser. You shouldn't leave telegrams around if you don't want other people to read them. Yeah. So she married another man. Well, I hope she knows what she was doing, but I doubt it. You, uh... You don't want to talk about it. Oh, it's something I'll have to take care of myself when I get to San Francisco. Oh, now, Francisco. look, you don't want to do anything foolish. Uh, have you had any breakfast? No. Any reason why you shouldn't? Tell me. Why are you pacing back and forth like that? What is there about doing that that makes a man feel better? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even realize. That's what he used to do, Robert. I can wonder about it now. Not much room for pacing in a prison cell. Jerry, what's the matter? Nothing. Nothing at all. I keep talking about him, don't I? I shouldn't. Oh, I wish you would. Oh, come on, let's have breakfast. I'll get my hat and coat. Oh, look. Uh, why not have it up here? I'll phone and have them send it up. Oh, sure, if you'd rather. Do you mind? No, I don't mind, Lieutenant. It'll be fine. There. More toast, more coffee, and more eggs. How about it? Just coffee. I shouldn't, though. Why not? Well, look what I did last night over a cup of coffee. Practically told you the story of my life. Only part of it. And that isn't right, not to finish. You said you were from Maine. Yes. Was he from there, too? No. No, I came down here looking for a job. I always wanted to live in New Orleans. How did you meet him? At a concert. Oh? I had a seat in the gallery. The concert finished, and I was trying to get out, and he... He was just sitting there, looking at the stage, just as if the orchestra was still playing. I, uh, I beg your pardon. Oh, oh excuse me. I, <laughs> yes, I just didn't realize it was over. Oh. It was wonderful, wasn't it? Yes. Now, if you don't mind, you know, I... Sometimes uh... when a concert's over, I get the feeling that I've left myself for a long time. Of course, you wouldn't know it, but that's the greatest thing that could happen to me. I'm the most wonderful person in the world to leave. And that's what you'd like to do right now, isn't it? Believe me. Well, I hardly think I can Coming stand... out, please. Oh, I'm Coming so out. sorry. I'm Look, sorry. all I want is to walk to the street with you. There's no harm in that, is there? Well, no, I guess not. Would you like my views on music? When I listen to good music, I feel that there's nothing that man is capable of doing that I can't do. Then it stops and it's all over. Oh, I don't think that. I think music adds something to your life. It wasn't there before. And that it stays with you always. Yeah, I'd like that. You think you could teach me? <laughs> Frankly, no. Well, look, I'm sorry. I should have told you about me. I just go along talking to everybody I meet that I like. And then after a minute, I say something silly and that's that. Thanks for the minute. Goodbye. You, uh, you come here often? No. Why not? Look, 
There's an all Beethoven program next Sunday. If you'd meet me out here in front, I know a fellow who handles the publicity, and he generally gets me a couple of passes. How about it? Maybe. I don't know. You it's see, at 2 o'clock. I'll be out in front in 10 minutes or two. If you're there, well, that'll be fine. I'll see. Goodbye. Goodbye. And please, I didn't mean to be... Well, never mind. Goodbye. Yes, Lieutenant, you guessed it. I was there at 10 minutes of 2. After the concert, we went to dinner. The most expensive place in town. That's the way he was. He was always like that. You keep looking at your wristwatch, Abigail. Well, that's because I keep thinking of a stack of envelopes at home. I have to have them all addressed by morning. Why? So I can get paid. So I can eat. Well, you've got something there. <laughs> I told you I worked in a stockbroker's office, didn't I? Yes. But I just got fired. Oh. I get fired all the time. You don't know much about me, do you? Well, a little. I'm very observant. All you really know is that my name is Robert Minette. Now, does that name mean anything? Well, isn't there a Minette Park down by the river? Yes. In a Manette Street, and there used to be a Manette Mansion. My great-great-grandfather was Governor General of Louisiana before there was a United States. For 150 years, there hasn't been anything going on around here that a Manette... Well, it, it does something to you to get standards set for you and ideals and ambitions that, well, that you just know are too high for you. You're a Manette, so they expect you to set the world on fire. Except I don't have a match. You do understand that. Yes, I do. Well, then you're a genius, because I don't. <laughs> anyway, now you know why I am the way I am. Well, what's the matter with the way you are? If you think I'm going to tell you, you're wrong. You haven't caught on to a very important thing. What? I'm doing my best to get you to like me. <laughs> now, which do you like better? The person I pretend to be or the person I am? Well, the person you are. You're making a terrible mistake. I don't think so. Well, if you really don't think so, that'd help an awful lot. Come on, let's dance. I saw a great deal of Robert during the next few weeks. And then he asked me to go home to meet his mother. I knew how important that was to him. And from the little things that he had said, how desperately she loved him. Oh, I wanted so much for her to like me. I suppose it was really pretty funny because all the time there was only one thing that she wanted. And that was to be able to like me, to approve of me. Because I was her last chance to save Robert. I've often wondered what would have happened if she'd told me all she knew about him that first afternoon when we were alone. More tea, my dear. N no, no, thank you. I hope you'll forgive me, Miss Martin, if I seem terribly blunt. We've discussed a lot of things this afternoon, but I know what's on your mind, and I'm sure that you know what's on my mind. Ever since Robert met you, he's been able to talk of nothing else. Do you always have that effect on young men? <laughs> well, I, I really don't know. You see... Robert's the first young man I've ever known. Well, wh what I mean is... I know Rob what you mean. Tell me, are you in love with my son? Yes. Well, this may seem a little silly to you, but ours is a very old-fashioned family, and, well, Robert wouldn't think of marrying without my consent. I want you to know that he has it. He wants to marry me? Hasn't he told you? No. Well, he does, Abigail, with all his heart. Oh... And, and I want him to, with all mine. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Manette. There's uh, just one thing, dear. Yes? Uh, there are, well, there are certain traits in Robert that, uh, that you may... Oh, they're nothing really evil. Believe me, he just sometimes forgets his sense of responsibility. That's why I'm so glad you're the kind of person you are. Between us, we will make him strong. Now go find him, dear. Tell him he can come in now. Later, when we were alone, Robert said he wanted to take me someplace. It was very important that we go. Cafe, he said. Not a shabby place, just a cafe. He often talked in silly little riddles like that. I just laughed and went with him. Have a good look, Abigail. This is the den of iniquity I used to spend so much of my time in. I see. You know, your mother warned me about you, Robert. Oh, I can tell you much worse things about me than she can. You see, I know more about the subject. <laughs> Abigail, do you think there's any hope for me? Well, maybe. Robert, what is this place? 
the hangout, gamblers, bookmakers. Why do they have to make it so uncomfortable for themselves? It's so full of smoke. Oh, it's a law. Don't ask me why, but it's a law. I came here to look it all in the face and say goodbye. Do you believe me? Yes, of course I believe you, darling. Look, up there at the bar, that big fella. Yeah? That's Harry Jordan. Who? Jordan. He's probably the biggest bookmaker in town. I've seen him lose as much as $30,000 in... I guess I do get a little too excited over something that doesn't mean anything to me anymore. Well, well, well. Mr. Robert Manette, in person. Oh, hello, Simon. You know, you haven't been honoring us with your presence lately. Oh, but now that you're back, all is forgiven. Isn't that right, Miss... Uh, uh, Miss... Miss Martin, Mr. Fenimore. Oh, how do you do? Yeah, they tell me our friends, the bookies, are arranging one of those sucker traps at the racetrack tomorrow. Yeah. You know anything about it? No. Oh, if a fellow was sure, he could clean up. But that's the trouble with these dirty crooks. You never know when they're on the level with their crookedness. Is, isn't that right, Miss Martin? I don't know what you're talking about. Why don't you ask Robert? I don't think I know anybody who can explain things more clearly to a beautiful girl than Robert. Why don't you just get along, Simon? I, uh, yeah, I've got to go to the paper anyway. Got a lot of good stories to write. Fire of mysterious origin. Bad boy meets good girl. <laughs> Damage estimated at $3,000. I can't tell you what an interesting life a reporter leads. You're getting way out of line, Simon. I don't mean anything. See you later. Goodbye, Miss Martin. I'm sorry, darling. He isn't really a friend of yours, is he? No, just a newspaper reporter I happen to know. Oh. Abigail, I'm trying to punish myself. I, I wanted you to see how rotten oh, I've darling, been. Darling, you how... mustn't. It's all right now. It's all past. You'll believe that. You'll help me. Darling, I love you. Let's get out of here. We were married on Christmas Day. Mrs. Manette wanted us to live with her, and it had never really entered our minds to do otherwise. She was completely happy, and so was I. And then, overnight, everything changed. Robert was arrested for the murder of Harry Jordan. Mrs. Manette still had the money she'd found in Robert's trousers. One morning while she was out, two detectives came to the house. When Mrs. Manette returned... What happened, Abigail? Did they find the money? What happened? Nothing. They didn't find any. Oh, thank goodness. I saw their car here. I, I kept walking around the block until they left. They didn't find the money, Mother, because I did. What do you mean? Sewed into the lining of the draperies. I, I had to hide it, Abigail. Robert must have a good lawyer. Lawyers cost money. Well, I destroyed the money. I burned it. Oh, no. We could never use that money, Mother. Abigail, I swear to you by all my love for Robert and for you that he did not kill Harry Jordan. You know and I know, Mother, that he did. Are you going to turn against him, too? From the day you married him, you closed your eyes to what it was all about, to what he was all about, selfishly, just so you could be happy. He needed your strength, not your love. That's why I let you marry him. And all you gave him back was his own weakness. But, Mother, I didn't know. There was no way for me to know. You were blind because you wanted to be. It might have hurt you to know that Robert is what he is. Oh, no. If you had been willing to be hurt for his sake, you could have saved him. I love Robert. No. It's I who love him. Because I'm willing to know all about him and keep on loving him. But you, I relied on you. And you failed. <laughs> The trial was short. Robert had confessed. We walked out of the courtroom together, Mrs. Minette and I. Neither of us could say anything. But outside, on the steps of the courthouse, suddenly she whirled and faced me. You killed him! You killed him! You killed him! Well, that was about a year ago, Lieutenant. She left here and went to New York. Housekeeper for some wealthy family. And what happened? It didn't make you feel different about him? About Robert? No. No, for a while I'd visit him in prison as often as I could, but then... Oh, excuse me. Hello? We have some good news for you, Lieutenant. All planes are resuming schedule at midnight. Not until midnight? I'm afraid not, sir. There'll be a limousine leaving here for the airport at 11.30. Okay, thanks very much. Well, I... Looks like I'll be on my way tonight. It's funny, it stopped raining and I didn't even notice. Shows what an interesting talker I am. Well, I'll run along now. It's been nice meeting you, Jerry. 
It was even nicer of you to listen to me. Good luck. Thank you. I guess I should say Merry Christmas. Except it isn't, is it? Oh, sure, sure. And thanks for the use of your room. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello? Uh, this is Simon Fenimore, Lieutenant. Say, that girl, Jackie Lamont, do you happen to know where she is? She was here, but she left about an hour ago. What do you want? Has something to do with those headlines in the paper? Yeah, maybe. Something like that. There's nothing wrong. There was something I wanted to talk to her about, that's all. Oh, did she see the paper? She hadn't when she left here. Oh. Well, uh, thanks, Lieutenant. Goodbye. Okay, Simon, what did he say? I told you he wouldn't know where she was. Now, why don't you get out of here, Manette? My landlady wouldn't like this. Think of a wonderful story you can write for the newspaper. Escaped murderer hides out in reporter's room. Exclusive. At least you can put down that gun, Robert. Tell me again. The woman who runs that joint, what did she say? Okay, okay. She hasn't seen her since last night when she went to the cathedral with that lieutenant. And what's wrong with that? What size suit do you wear? Look, Robert, the cops are looking for you all over town. And I want to shave, Simon. I want to look pretty when I see my wife again. Clean and pretty. You can understand that, Simon, can't you? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Well, I'll get out downtown. Help yourself to whatever you want. No, Simon. I'm staying here till it's dark. And you're staying with me. I went to a lot of trouble to see my wife. My wife who gets a job in a place like the Maison Le Fette while I'm in prison. I've got things to talk over with her. You can understand that, too, can't you? What are you going to do? Just straighten out my family life, that's all. What time does she go to work at that place, the Maison Le Fête? Oh, I guess about nine o'clock. That's fine, Simon. And that's where we'll be tonight, you and I. Nine o'clock at the Maison Le Fête. Just a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of Christmas Holiday. Was there ever a girl in love who didn't sometime or other ask this question? Come on and tell me, Jim. What was it made you fall in love with me? And nine times out of ten, the answer goes something like this. Gosh, honey, I don't know exactly. Something about you, that's all. You're so... so sweet. You see, it's often hard for a man to put into words the way he feels about the girl he loves. But when he says she's sweet... It's pretty sure to mean one thing. It means she has the all-important feminine charm that women call daintiness. Men just know it makes a girl nice to be close to. Here's what a famous screen star, Maria Montez, says. Without perfect daintiness, no other charm counts. And she gives you a tip. It's so easy to make daintiness sure. A daily Lux Soap Beauty Bath does the trick. The creamy, fragrant lather leaves skin really fresh and sweet. Yes, charming women everywhere have discovered that their complexion soap, Lux Toilet Soap, makes a delightful bath soap, too. They love the luxury of this satin-smooth cake, the delicate clinging fragrance it leaves on the skin. They love the way it lathers, even in hard water. Yet, Lux Toilet Soap is thrifty, too. Each cake can be used to the last thin sliver. So, for a real beauty bath, use the soap that's luxurious, yet inexpensive, The soap nine out of ten screen stars prefer. Hollywood's own beauty soap. Why not get some fragrant white Lux toilet soap tomorrow? We return you to Mr. Keeley. Act three of Christmas Holiday. Starring Loretta Young as Abigail, William Holden as Jerry, and David Bruce as Robert. It's a few minutes before nine o'clock at the nightclub called the Maison Le Fête. The crowd tonight is unusually large, perhaps because of the holidays, perhaps because the wife of an escaped murderer is billed as the star entertainer. Among the crowd is Jerry Mason. Quickly, he seeks out the proprietor, Valerie de Moro. Hello, Mr. Morrow. Well, good evening, Lieutenant. How are you? I thought you were well on your way to Frisco by now. Oh, uh, the planes aren't leaving till midnight. Uh, Mr. Morrow, uh, she's here, isn't she? Jackie Lamont? Close the door. Yes, yeah, she's here, Lieutenant. She's getting ready to do a number. You heard about her husband? Yes. 
Um, how is she? Wouldn't you know? She's waiting for him. I thought if I came out here, maybe I could help. I, I don't know how quite I could Well, you help. might. You don't think there's a chance that Manette would risk coming out here, do you? Well, you never can tell. But just in case, they've got detectives all over the place. Yeah, I saw one when I got out of the cab. I hope they catch him soon. You don't really know, Jackie, Lieutenant. I think I do. I like that crazy kid. I like that one man look in her eyes. I only wish she were a different kind of guy. When she came here tonight, I told her to go on home, but she wouldn't go. She wants to do a job. But uh, what about you? If your plane's going to leave, what are you doing out here? Cab's waiting. It'll take me direct to the airport. Oh, I'll be in Frisco in the morning, huh? I'm not going. I've changed my mind. Oh? No. You see, uh, I've learned a hundred years' worth of life in the past 24 hours. I found out that you just don't do things because people have done the same things the same way. The important thing is being honest with yourself, whatever you feel, whatever you are. That's why I said I think I know Jackie better than you think I do. Or maybe I mean I know Abigail. You're all right, Lieutenant. Well, that's her number. I think we'd better get out there, huh? Coming, Lieutenant? Oh, yes. Yes, I'd like to watch it. The things you need a helping hand. I will understand. even take an encore? Robert! Oh, Robert, my darling! Oh, here, let me look at you. Let me look you at look you, well, darling. Abigail. Abigail. Oh, no one has called me that. Oh, that's right. You're Jackie now, aren't you? Yes. Jackie Lamont. No, don't turn on the light. I like it this way. It's a nice effect. The moonlight streaming in the window and Simon here squirming against the shadows on the wall. Say hello to Jackie, Simon. I'm sorry, Jackie. Robert, Robert, we can't stay here. There must be a dozen detectives here looking for you. I keep telling him that. I keep telling him. I know they're here. They're on the dance floor, and they're at the front door, and they're at the back door. Yes. Kind of forgot I might not want to come in that way just to please them. Simon and I use the window, and I'll go out the same way. We'll have to hurry. I can be ready in just a minute, and we'll need some money. Maybe Valerie. Wait a minute. You mean you want to come along with me? Why? Tell me that. Why? I've kind of had the idea the last two and a half years that you'd gotten used to getting along without me. At least it looked like that, didn't it, Simon? Robert! Uh, I'll get the money. You're staying right here. What kind of a fool do you think I am? You thought I'd rot in jail, didn't you? And you could do whatever you wanted to. Probably I'd never know. And even if I did, it wouldn't make any difference. There'd be nothing I could do about it anyway. Whatever made you think you could get away with it, Abigail? Robert! Robert, I love you, darling. I love you. I you love you. You know the you. way you say it? I could almost believe it. Say it a little louder. I'd like the press to hear it. Say it for Simon. There hasn't been a second that I didn't love you. Sure. Right here at the Maison Lafette. There's only one reason I've been working here. Only one. When it was all over the trial and everything, I... I saw that your mother was right. I should have kept you from doing those things you were doing, Robert. I was just as much to blame as anybody. I can still hear them call you guilty. Guilty, guilty. I knew it was meant for me, too, and I wanted to die. But you were in prison, Robert, and you were alive. That's why I had to live, to live like you and to suffer like you. People that I've met here had nothing but contempt for me, and that's what I wanted was contempt and degradation. And now, darling, now do you know, this is my prison, Robert. But I'm not as strong as you are. I can't break out without you. I need you, darling. I've been holding on to you all this time, Robert, because I love you. They told me after the trial how my mother stood on the courthouse steps and slapped you across the face. But... It's time that I give you your reward, too. Anybody that loves as much as you do is entitled to a reward. Manette, don't. Manette, put down that gun. You've never loved anybody but me, Abigail. Isn't that right? No one else but me. No. Of course, people don't understand. They never do. Why, there might even be somebody who thinks you didn't love me, that you enjoy your career out here. And maybe that's true. Maybe people are right. Maybe you're what they say you are, a cheap, dirty... Stop it, Robert! Who's in here? What's going on? Get away from that light switch. Come in, both of you. Close that door. 
No. Get over against the wall. Yes, soldier, you too. Now, don't be a fool, Manette. You ought to know how easy one of these things can go off, soldier. If you got any sense at all, you put that gun away. I promise the police won't try any rough stuff if you do. Get smart, will you, Manette? Put that gun down. Wait a minute. What do you mean, you? You promise. They're closing in. I heard them talking just now. I, I heard them mention this dressing room. You killed a man once, Manette, and you didn't get away with it. This time they're going to hang you. Shut up. You're not going to kill anybody here, Manette. You're not going to shoot me because you'll have to wait until I turn my back on you. And I'm not going to turn my back on you, see? And you're not going to shoot Jackie because I just now saw a cop come to that window. Manette, stand where you are. I came to kill you, Abigail, and that's just what I'm going to do. Step out of the way, soldier. Stop that gun, Manette. I'm not even sorry for you, Abigail. I'm not even... Robert! Boys, they can go in. Oh, Robert. You know, you know, I never saw you cry before. Not, not once. Oh, Robert. Robert. You can, you can let go now, Abigail. No, no. You can let go now. No, darling, no, I... Robert! Oh. You heard what he said, Abigail. You can let go. Now. Oh. Oh, take me home. Oh, please, please, take me home. Well, this is it. This is where I live. And thank you, Jerry. I, uh, I was planning to go to the airport in a little while, Abigail. Except I'm not going until I know that you're all right. Until I know what you're going to do. I won't leave until I know. You know, all of it was like a dream. A beautiful dream at first. And then a nightmare that wouldn't end. It would never, never end as long as I lived. But tonight it did end. I'm alive. Abigail. I'm all right. Really, I'm all right. I'll be going back now, Jerry. Back to Maine, I mean. My grandparents, they live there. I think I'd like to see them. Do you remember what you said a little while ago? You asked me to take you home. I can't tell you how that made me feel. I'd like to do that, Abigail. I want to do that. Back to Maine. Would you let me? Oh, Jerry, you're looking ahead, and I know what you're thinking, but it would be a mistake. Really, it would. I know it would. Oh, you saved me from one mistake. I was going to San Francisco, remember? All I want is to take you back, Abigail. And then maybe... If I ever get another leave sometime, maybe I could come and see you. If you'd like to see me. If I'd like to. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jerry. I think that'd be fine. Now that we've had our Christmas holiday three months ahead of time, I think you'll all agree that every minute of it was a great experience. Thanks to Loretta Young and two ex-servicemen we're proud to welcome to this theater, David Bruce and William Holden. Oh, how about yourself, Bill? Last time I saw you, you were in uniform too, and with eagles on your shoulders. Well, Loretta, with your husband in the service, that makes this performance strictly G.I. <laughs> right, boys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, come, come, fellas. Let's demobilize. You can treat the colonel like a human being now. He's just a producer. Quiet, Loretta. Here in Hollywood, you don't refer to a producer as just a producer. <laughs> Or as a human being. Now, seriously, Bill, you must be glad to be making feature pictures with established stars again. I am, David. But I feel that I've directed some of the biggest stars in the world these last few years. Biggest stars in the world? The men of the Army Air Forces. Pilots, gunners, bombardiers, and ground crews. Men who have just completed the greatest performance in history. Oh, I think we'll all agree with you there, Bill. I missed meeting you in person in the Air Force, Colonel, but I saw your picture, Target for Today, and it was really great. 
Uh, were your Air Force pictures strictly for instruction purposes? That's right. We made pictures covering every detail of our activities, from taking off a bomber to coming out of a dive. Coming out of a dive? Don't you just sneak out the back way? <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us, Bill. <laughs> do you think that motion pictures will be used for uh, education in civilian schools from now on? I think they can be, and in many cases should be. Oh? They did wonders in the service. Hmm, I think I could stand to go back to school again and brush up on my three G's. Don't you mean your three R's? No, three G's. Grable, Garble, and Garson. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd sort of like to brush up on the Old West with Loretta Young. <laughs> the Old West with Loretta Young? Yes, if the professor will give a showing of Along Came Jones. Oh, you mean her current Gary Cooper picture? Yes, but I wasn't thinking about Gary Cooper. Just Loretta. <laughs> no. You mean you're falling for that Lux complexion, David. And he's not alone in that, Bill. Well, thank you, kind people. And I'm not alone in using Lux soap, either. Most of the people I know depend on it. It's a wonderful complexion care. And in return for those kind words, Loretta, Lux has a special treat for all of you next Monday night when we take you to colorful Hawaii for universal sparkling comedy, It's a Date. Our stars are Brian Ahern as the wealthy bachelor trapped by love, Diana Lynn as the young, ambitious actress training for her first big role, and Gail Sundergaard as the mother who finds herself in the center of a mix-up fit to end all mix-ups. Who gets who and who gets what? Well, you'll hear the surprising answer next week. It's a date for Monday night, Bill. Thanks a million. Good night, sir. Good, Good night. night, and our thanks to all of you. <laughs> our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Brian Ahern, Diana Lynn, and Gail Sundergaard in It's a Date. This is William Keeley saying goodnight to you from Hollywood. Every loyal American is interested in speeding our return to normal, overcoming shortages, and supplying Americans both here and overseas with things they need. So remember, we are still critically short of these very essential products, fats and oils. Waste fats are important not only to the manufacture of medicine for our wounded, but equally important in the manufacture of civilian goods. Automobiles, tires, vacuum cleaners and refrigerators, nylon, plastics, paint, soap, and scores of others. Housewives can render a vital service to their country by saving all waste kitchen fats, every drop, no matter how charred or discolored. Keep a tin can handy and deliver waste fats regularly to your butcher. He'll give you four cents plus two red points for each pound. William Holden appeared tonight through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, whose current release is Duffy's Tavern. The war is over, but with millions of our men and women overseas, the Hollywood Victory Committee has pledged its continued support to the entertainment program of the USO. To date, almost 4,000 Hollywood performers, stars of screen and radio, have traveled millions of miles to brighten the leisure hours of our fighting forces. With the support of the entire motion picture industry, they'll continue to visit our occupation forces, just as they are currently entertaining wounded servicemen in hospitals and convalescent homes throughout America. This program of the Lux Radio Theater will be broadcast to our men and women overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear It's a Date with Brian Ahern, Diana Lynn, and Gail Sondergaard. Three little words when you bake and fry mean surefire results. Rely on Spry. Rely on Spry for light, full-flavored cakes, tender, nut-sweet pastry, crisp-coated, digestible fried food. You can say that again. Rely on Spry.